you bookends welcome to a 10 minute book review i'm 10. this week's book review is going to be on sorrowland by rivers solomon we'll like to start off every book review with a star point as in out of 10 stars how many stars did this particular book honor and a rating as in if this was a movie or a tv show what would we rate it so star point this book is five out of ten stars it is middle of the road it could have really been a lot better if the implementation had been done better but it is typical river solomon a uh, river solomon so if you're used to their style of writing you're not disappointed because they have not changed anything in how it is they write so jumping right on in this book stars Vern. Vern is an albino teenager. I believe she's like 15 when we meet her. She's living on this compound that is a cult. I like how the book distinguishes between religion and cult. So religion is something that you worship actively. A cult is something that like, encompasses, I should say, your entire life being. So religion touches on certain aspects of your life but it's not your entire life you know what i mean this is never your entire life uh with the cult is someone telling you how to live every aspect of your life no matter what it is so she is in a cult and the cult is religion based but mostly it's supposed to be like a uh, black power not really a black power because it's not that they don't like white people black power is not about disliking white people um, but it's not that it's black power, it's, it's more so like a Tulsa, how it's just black people who are trying to get away from racism and uh, being degraded in areas where white people are, I don't want to say the ruling class, but kind of, you know, the ruling class. So she's in this rural area, she's in this cult with her mother and her brother and she's married to a man. The book starts off with her giving birth to twins in the woods and this book is kind of hard to describe only because I think that it is an ode to mental illness. It's hard to tell what in this book actually is happening and what isn't happening. So she gives birth to these two twins, she's raising them in the forest, and there is someone hunting her. Uh, they're leaving like dead animals around her, like uh, one of them was a dead baby deer with a pacifier or a binky in its mouth. Um, yes, yeah, so they're just leaving dead animals all around, and she's thinking that it's because she escaped the cult, that someone in the cult is doing this. Now, here's the thing. One of her friends, Lucy, or well, her only friend, Lucy, uh, she was, her mother, her and her father were in the cult. Her mother decided to run away from the cult. And then she also wanted to take Lucy with her. And when her mother took Lucy away, somehow the authorities made her go back, even though they're abusive in the cult. Like, they tie people down when they go to bed at night. And it's not just women. They tie men and women down at night when they go to bed. It makes no sense. I don't understand why they're doing it. Even married couples. There's no real reason why they would need to be strapped down at night. But they, they do it anyway. Even the leader of the cult gets strapped down at night. It doesn't make any sense. I don't understand why that was even in there. But that's just one of the abusive things that they do. And they end up bringing the girl back anyway. The authorities end up bringing Lucy back. And um, Vern's own mother was about to have Vern taken away from her when, when Vern was like a little baby. But the social worker was like, hey, if you go to this place, I won't have your baby taken away from you and they can give you structure. None of this makes sense. I don't know if you're watching this from America. I don't know if you are an American. I don't know if you are an American minority. But there is no flip dipping way that any American authority is going to say to a black person, hey, we know this militant cult that don't really like us. 
that would be a good fit for you to go to with your kid. No. There is no court in the United States of America that is going to send a black person to go live in a cult of black people who are militant towards white people and a society that is ruled by white people. That is a never gonna happen. So I found that to be like really just odd. Because we all know that's not gonna happen. We all know that's just not what's gonna happen. Nobody wants black people to get together. Nobody. Nobody wants us to get together. So I doubt hardly that any court system or any social worker is ever going to say, hey, black person, you need to go with these other angry black people and raise your children with the angry blacks and one day come for us. I don't think that's ever going to happen. So that was, um, that was unbelievable. <laughs> that was very unbelievable. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in the book that is believable. Uh, reverse solomon if there's if there's one thing that this author does right they create books that are steeped in science or in the possible and at the end of the book they drag it all away <laughs> they change it up they're like ah gotcha no this book ain't gonna make sense this book ain't gonna make sense <sighs> so they did the, with the other book that they did they did, they did with this one too. So the best way to enjoy River Solomon books is to read about 60% of it, 60 to 70% of it. Do not read the remaining. Just make up the ending on your own because I guarantee you, uh, she, I feel like the author like flips a coin just to figure out how it's going to end, rolls one of those D&D &D dice. Cause that's what it kind of feels like. Someone's playing D&D, &D, Dun Dungeons and Dragons. And, um, someone is just like rolling the dice like whoop now there's a troll like where did the troll come from we downtown like you know it's just it feels like that's how she finishes off her books um it really does seem like there's a lot of mental illness in this book because you can't really tell if anyone is following her or not and then something odd happens it's like she has a love affair with someone who had a love affair with her mom but never ate like it doesn't make sense there's parts that don't make sense and so it's like she's she's becoming I don't want to say a monster but it alludes to a monster growing within her and then that's why she's getting superhuman strength that's it's slowly coming on like every day she's noticing that she's stronger or that something doesn't hurt or something like that um, trigger warning big trigger warning normally we do not include trigger warnings with our reviews because that sometimes spoils the actual plot of the book or the twist of the book but there's a huge trigger warning for this if you engage in self-harm or if you have engaged in self-harm or if you have an inclination towards engaging in self-harm this is not the book for you do not read this book uh, if you know someone who has engaged in self-harm, is inclined towards self-harm, or may have just stopped self-harming themselves, keep this book away from them. This is not for them. Vern enjoys harming herself and having others harm her as well. She even enjoys something that's called Ascension, where the leader of the cult, who is her husband, before it was his father, but now her husband, uh, drowns women until they pass out and then revives them. She enjoys that. She enjoys harming herself. She enjoys cutting herself. She enjoys burning herself. She enjoys she enjoys a lot of things that include pain either self-inflicted or inflicted by others onto her. And it's not for some sort of sexual gratification where the reader can assess okay so things are starting to get a little heavy. I know I can skip over this. It's not for the purpose of sexual gratification. It is literally just something that she enjoys engaging in habitually and without warning. So yeah, that is a huge, huge, huge trigger warning because there's no way to kind of assess when a scene like that is coming on. Absolutely none. 
She could be in her monologuing, she could be walking through the woods, she could be doing a task and all of a sudden she's cutting herself or burning herself or tearing at a, a cut that she has to make it bigger or you know there's there's no warning as to when this is going to happen so if you are the type of person who is um, triggered by self-harm or inclined towards self-harm or are currently self-harming right now and are looking to stop please avoid this book do not pick this book up river solomon has other books choose one of those do not get this one okay back to the actual story itself I was disappointed with the plot, I was disappointed with how it is she was getting her powers. If you were a gamer or you are just into gaming news, if you know about Resident Evil Village, if you've ever played it, I'm personally a gamer so I know these things, but if you've ever played that game or if you know anything about the game, you essentially know the plot and the ending of this book. Vern is essentially Mother Miranda and so that kind of left me playing you know the chicken or the egg like who came first was it evil I'm sorry was it Resident Evil Village that came first with the idea of having uh, this person who receives these powers that are almost infinite because of this thing I'm not going to give it away but if you just google Resident Evil and google Mother Miranda you legit have the plot for this so like who came first did mother miranda come first or did sorrowland come first because i know that resident evil came out before this book did but it's possible that the author was in the process of writing it and maybe shared some information about it before it came i don't know i don't know um uh, but it the plot is dead on to resident evil village mother miranda and Vern are legitimately the same people the only difference is that Mother Miranda's only concern is reviving her dead daughter. That has been her her thing from day one. Vern's thing becomes reviving uh, people who end up dying due to an event that takes place in the book. And at the end of the book, like I would say the last 30 or 40 pages, it, it doesn't jive with the rest of it. Like the rest of the book is, is one thing. And then the last couple of chapters is something else. And then the last 30 or 40 ch pages is something else completely. So it's, I don't want to feel like, I don't want to say it's like three different books in one. But it's almost like three different alternate perspectives. Like three different alternate worlds for one person. Which made no sense. It felt very disjointed. I'll say it like that. It felt very disjointed. Also, Vern has a relationship with another woman, but it made me feel very uncomfortable because I couldn't quite figure out if Vern was an adult when this was going on. Uh, I want to believe that she was around 15 when she had her kids, so I'm going to, I want to assume that she was an adult when she was having this sexual relationship with this woman, but it's not really made clear that she was an adult, and so that makes me uncomfortable because like a 15 16 year old girl shouldn't be going to some grown woman's house for for stuff it just it didn't make it made me uncomfortable um even her husband is much older than her so it just made me uncomfortable to think that this child is sexually active with quite a few adults um it just that that made me highly uncomfortable uh, thankfully the sex scenes first of all there are no sex scenes they're just mentions of sex scenes so there'll be a time where like oh you know and I was on the couch or she would not I it's not like that it's she was on the couch and, and this happened and that happened but it's not descriptive it doesn't tell about any clothes being removed or any body parts it's not descriptive in that way no one is going to uh, suddenly go through puberty by reading this book there will be no pops and bangs from reading this book but I, I just felt that made me feel uncomfortable maybe the author will you know okay Howell and Farrell okay so I kind of mentioned three years but went by before she started having this relationship with this woman but three years could be anything 
so when her friend Lucy left, I believe she was about 13. And not too long after her friend Lucy left, she got married to the preacher who ran the whole thing. He was definitely an adult, so what, she had to be like 13, 14 years old. And she got pregnant rather quickly. I don't know. I don't know. I'm hoping that she was 18 when she was having this relationship, but because I can't confirm that she was, I'm not for it. I know everyone's like, yay, representation and stuff like that, but no. Like, I don't care what gender it is. I don't care what sexuality it is. If there is a child having any form of sexual relationship, whether it be heterosexual, homosexual, it, it doesn't even matter. If it is a child having a sexual relationship with an adult, it is disgusting and it is wrong and I can't get behind it. So I, I honestly can't say that's what's happening. I know that's what happened when she was in the cult, but I'm pretty sure that was like a forced situation. Like I'm pretty sure she didn't have like an option to say no. Um, but even this other situation where she's having a relationship with a woman, I can't, I can't figure out whether she was an adult or not when that was happening because so many things kind of blurred together. <sighs> yeah. This was a five. This was a five out of ten stars. It was not horrible. It was not great. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Um, I wouldn't tell anyone to stop reading it though unless I know that they engaged or have the propensity to get engaged in self-harm. Then I would definitely say do not read this, put it down, burn it, let me have it, no. But it's not that I would recommend against it. It's just it wasn't that great. And I was kind of I was kind of depressed by that. You know, I was expecting more. I don't know. But yeah. Uh, we were turned on to this book by let me get his name. So I want to give him credit. He was doing one of his late night book reviews because that's how he does his book reviews now. He does them via live and he does them uh, late night. So Paul reads. I'll try to leave like a little thing for him either up top or in the description. But we learned about this book um, from Paul Reed. He was doing a horror review and this was one of the books that he chose to do the horror review on. I don't really see this book as horror. He was saying something else similar. I don't really see this book as horror. Um, simply because to me it feels like this woman is just, just straight up not mentally available. She's not mentally there. I don't know if what's happening in the story is actually happening. So, I don't, I don't know. This could all just be one very long hallucination. Or it could be bouts of hallucinations with bouts of lucidity mixed in. And the reader doesn't know which one they're, they're currently imbibing in when they're reading. It could be anything. I honestly don't know. Um, that ambiguity, though, kind of led to it being a five as well. Because I want to know, what am I reading? And what is the end result? And why should I care about these things happening? If none of this stuff is actually happening, then there's no stakes involved. There's no high stakes, low stakes. There's no stakes involved. Why do I care? But then if everything is happening, why is it so disjointed? Why does not why does the things not fit together? Why are the puzzle pieces so jagged and bent and awkward? It doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. It, just, it doesn't make sense. Whew. Not a horrible book just it, you know, I wouldn't I'm not out here recommending it to people I'm not recommending against it it's just not great I'll say it like that not great yeah but thank you so much for watching this has been a 10 minute book review if you like what you see please like and review bye bookends